They wanted an unboxing. They didn't know they were getting a fresca to start it off. Delicious. Forgive me if my big bald head pops into this thing. I never do this. So what we're looking at here, special delivery by way of tooth and nail and a certain unoriginal vinyl. It's a special reissue of two Stage Acre records. As you can see, this lovely label here has been placed so that no one sends me hate mail to my actual house. They can just keep sending it to my email like they already do. So, to call this a labor of love be a bit of an understatement. Jason and all the unoriginal vinyl guys, and of course, Jim Worthen and all the tooth and nail people appreciate everything that happened to make this happen. All right, what do we got here? Oh, new leggings. Gorgeous. If my big bald head gets in the way, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. This isn't really my jam. Awkward unboxing by 50 year olds. All right, that's right, 50. What'd you get me for my birthday? It was this year, obviously. All right, this box is enormous. Oh yeah. Yep, I hit the camera and I don't care. Just so you guys know, this camera right here is sitting on top of a, of a music stand. That's how high tech my, my setup is. I almost said a cuss word, but I didn't. Jim Worthen, I'm thinking of you, guys. So, it's supposed to be the originally released uh, How to Live with a Curse and the most recent release, 1995. Reissued by Tooth and Nail. Oh, look at that bad boy. Very proud of this record. Actually very proud of all these little designs that I did. I enjoyed making all of it. Made it take a lot longer, of course, but what are you gonna do? And how to live with a curse. Uh, there we go right there. Tooth and nail, unoriginal vinyl. So which should we open first? I don't know. Let's go chronological. I like doing that. It's a very satisfying sound. It makes me feel aggressive. Hopefully you guys don't witness a dismemberment today. All right. So you got the track listing on the back here. This photograph was taken by Peter Melby. He uh, used to run our website. He shot this when he was in Long Beach. And this album cover, which ended up being a little darker than we had originally intended, was shot at my old bar where I used to work. Um, and I believe the email stated that there would be downloads available online, but let's just get to the goods. Let's get to the goods. So these days, I don't know if you know this, well, vinyl people do know this, but if you're not a vinyl person, you can't, they won't, they just simply will not make an entire you know, hour long record on one piece of vinyl anymore. It just, it's not a thing that they do because the sound quality isn't there. I don't know if it used to be, maybe I'm forgetting the length of old records, but nowadays it's almost exclusively two LPs. Dude, this looks pretty good. I'm not even gonna lie. Look at that. Oh, dude, look at that thing. It's lovely, it's lovely. Just a couple little pieces of trivia. In case you're interested, I know my documentary styling is scintillating, but I personally wanted to start this record out, and I still do, with sort this out right now. This to me would would be a much more it's all over my hand would be a much more original start to the record, but I was outvoted, and a reason to believe, which is definitely a more uh, representative of the usual Staves Acre sound. I just thought that uh, sort this out would be a little bit different way to turn it up. 
all that to say, I just, every rec, every song on this thing was poured over night after night in the old Initium Eyewear Warehouse, where the foundation, the name of our de facto, is that the right word? Recording studio was. It was in the, we recorded this with uh, rows and rows of sunglasses all around us. So that is How to Live with a Curse. Originally, this came out on uh, Century Media Group, came out on their Abacus imprint, but I don't think it was really what they were hoping for. We we were happy with it. We were stoked on it. This came out right after we finished um, Bull Takes Fighter, and maybe that's what they were more interested in. I don't know, but this is what we did, and we loved this album very much. Okay, moving on. 1995. All I can tell you about this is that we were very thankful for the people who made it possible. Just a piece of trivia about this photograph right here. This took so many sh attempts to try to get representative lighting, correct lighting, the angle, and the vibe of when this album, what this album is hearkening back to, took a lot of time and Melanie, uh, uh, she did a great job. Melanie Negri, she's uh, inside the credits. Excellent photographer and an awesome person. This newsstand used to be covered in stickers as all newsstands were in Southern California. This is right outside the original, or the, I guess it's El Dorado 2, where Stave Zaker first recorded Friction in 1995. Without further ado, it's without further ado, guys. It's not without any further ado. I'm glad that we can squash that. Let's move on. Without further ado, let's open this bad boy up. So I'm pretty stoked. I, I hope you guys are happy with this. We're gonna throw it on the record player in just a minute. Oh, mamacita. Hydro 7-4, original artwork for us. He did this as a as just a nice thing to do for us. I don't know what to tell you, he's amazing. So this actually used to be on the back the one that you guys, uh, the crowdfunded one. And uh, there's a bunch more artwork and we're gonna find a way to get it all to you if you want it. Here's all your credits. Special shout out to my cousin Haley who sang on the song Moonstone and to the Air Shark versus Gorilla Choir who provided backing vocals. Yeah, that's right, threw that out there. This actually did not appear in the record. This is an image for the song. Mr. Luxburg, hi. Uh, Early fans of the band know what Mr. Larkspur is referring to. Got uh, the Dead Rejoice image. This is actually a uh, callback to At The Moment from the very first record. So you guys wanna see this vinyl or what? What's up? You wanna see it? I, mean, God, I just gotta look at this one more time. Thank you, Josh. Oh yeah. All right, look at that. Gorgeous. I mean, back in the day, you would never see things like this. This is just this is just incredible. I want to make it into a ball and throw it down a lane and get a strike every time. Now, LP2, sides C and D. Look at that. You like? I like it. I feel like that came out amazing. Lovely. Excellent job. I guess maybe we should listen to it. What do you guys think? I feel like that's a pretty good idea. Everything's gotta go back in its right place or else you're a fascist. So, we move to the living room. Outstanding. Here we are at the most advanced listening studio known to mankind. Take this off. Oh, what's this? Oh, spoken in tongues. Hm. Imagine that. Now, I was told that my face was requested to be on this. I don't know why that would be <laughs> if we're trying to sell records, I'm trying to associate only positive experiences with products that were being sold. But I get to play the song I want and I get to tell y'all to wear a mask. Come on, man. It's so easy. Look at this. I can wear a mask and then take a sip of this refreshing fresco. This is the song I, I kind of wanted to start the record with. So there you go.
background's pretty awesome. So there you have it. New reissues by way of Tooth and Nail Records and Unoriginal Vinyl. 1995 and How to Live with a Curse. I think they sound and look amazing. And I think you'll dig them. So enjoy. Also, wear a mask. <laughs>